By 1945, when the United Nations was founded, about one-third of the world's population resided in territories under colonial powers domination and lack of autonomy. Some countries still haven't completely shared their colonial past after 78 years. There are now 17 non-self-governing territories on the UN list spread around the globe. Despite the fact that some of them have no desire to achieve complete independence, the states include Western Sahara, Montserrat, New Caledonia, Pitcairn, and Tokelau. May I also take this opportunity to... Ibrahim Gambari, the conference chairman, wants the UN to step in quickly to guarantee independence for nations looking for it. Given the foregoing, the United Nations General Assembly resolved unequivocally that, and I quote again, Ibide steps shall be taken in trust and non-self-governing territory or all other territories which have not yet attained independence to transfer all powers to the peoples of these territories without any condition or reservations in accordance with their freely expressed will and, and desire without any distinction as to race, creed, or color in order to enable them to enjoy complete independence and freedom. It says, immediately. We believe that a new world order and society is possible only when colonialism is abolished the world over. It will be challenging to realize that this ideal, according to Ambassador O.P. Bachir, unless the crisis in some of these nations are handled. The independence uh, and decolonization of Western Sahara is also uh, key and, and important for the European Union, for the European Union and for the European law, because that's the only way to respect and implement the various uh, European Court of Justice decisions that called for the. Um, annulment of all those agreements, the economic agreements between Morocco and the European Union that, uh, that um, uh, include the wealth and the natural resources of the territory of Western Sahara. The European Court of Justice was very clear by the fact that Western Sahara is distinct and separate from Morocco and that the right of the people and their will and their natural resources should be uh, preserved and it's only the Sahrawi people that they can consent any, uh, any trading in those natural resources. Well, as I said, the main demand is reparations within the Caribbean on these issues. But I've mentioned uh, Haiti a lot. There's also Martinique because the Martinican people would have been impacted by poisoning. There's a, um, a poison called uh, Claudicon, which would have been introduced into the uh, French Caribbean islands when it was disallowed on the mainland. It was disallowed in France. So I think some 90% of the Martinican population was affected by this poison that was introduced into their waterline and is still affecting them to date. So we are also uh, demanding reparations on that as well. You see what the UN has been doing has been to have decades, you know, for decolonization. Then the decades pass and then they, 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 they bring up another decade. And we say no, that shouldn't happen. That the UN should actually fix periods, have time frame to say, by this time, this number of people will be free. You get it. So something has to be done about it. Participating countries represented at this conference have agreed to come up with an action plan to help liberate countries still under colonization. Punarman Benjamin, Arise News.